Australia is the only place in the world where an absolute lemon is also a cactus and a dark horse a fair cow, and everyone has an uncle called Bob. For our international audience, a lemon is a car that is broken, cactus means entirely broken, a dark horse is an unexpected winner. I wonder what your thoughts are on the following metaphors. Stunned mullet, a few ruse loose in the top paddock, a few stubbies short of a six-pack, have a sticky or a Captain Cook, or nice budgie smugglers, Tony Abbott. Much Australian parlance is metaphor. What is metaphor? Simply put, metaphor is symbolic language. In metaphor, one experience or reality is understood or explained by comparing it to another reality. Metaphor is the use of symbol to make meaning. An important thing to always remember is that metaphor, taken literally, is an absurdity. For example, to take the metaphor, it's raining cats and dogs, literally, is an absurdity. Just as it is absurd to take the metaphor, throwing the baby out with the bathwater, literally, or beating a dead horse. Yet, if we enter into the deeper meaning of these metaphors, an experience is offered. One might say it is raining hard, but to say it's raining cats and dogs gives the experience of really heavy rain a new insight. And so we can do with all metaphors, but we won't do the one with budgie smugglers today. The most important thing about today's reading is that it, it is all metaphor. Metaphor is the highway in to understanding today's readings. The point of John chapter 6 is precisely metaphor. John states, in the words of Jesus, the spirit gives life. The flesh is unprofitable. What John means is that we must understand the use of metaphor in experiencing Jesus. To take a metaphor literally is an absurdity. Worse, it is death. Jesus compares this to Judas. A literal understanding misses the point about Jesus entirely. Informed by the Spirit, it is only through metaphor that we grasp the meaning of Jesus. The invitation today is to elevate our minds from the literal to the symbolic, from the finite to the infinite. I'm not trying to be abstract. Metaphor is how religious and spiritual language works. If one wants to experience inner aliveness or vitality or purpose or meaning, we have no option but to embrace the experience of metaphor. It is precisely at this point of metaphor that division and conflict occurs in the early congregations to whom the Gospel of John is written. There is conflict between Jesus and the, and the Pharisees who overemphasize literalness or a literal interpretation. Later in John, chapter 6, verse 40 to 51, 51 the conflict around metaphor is between Jesus and the other Jews. Now, the conflict is within the close group of Jesus' own followers. Jesus uses metaphor and it causes so much offense that some of his close friends and followers 
walk away. Part of the offense is related to fear. Fear that Jesus is asking them to let go of their traditions, their identity. Instead, Jesus is only asking that their heritage be transformed into metaphor, be transformed into symbol. I now ask that we do the same. In the meditation on the bread of life in John 6, and in our Eucharist, we are asked to enter into metaphor, enter into the realm of the symbolic. We are asked to transform our life into the life of God, and to transform our actions into the actions of God. Jesus said in today's Gospel, then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before. The elevation of the bread during the Eucharist and the elevation of Jesus during the Ascension is an invitation to elevate our consciousness from the literal to the symbolic, from the physical to the divine. Our finite selves, our physical universe, is an expression, a symbol, of the infinite God. The bread and the wine are symbols of finite reality, symbols of the whole creation, symbols of our entire lives. The elevation of the bread during the Eucharist and the elevation of Christ transforms our finite lives, our finite consciousness into the body and blood of Christ, into a manifestation of God's presence. Our lives are transformed into God's life. Our actions are transformed into the life-giving actions of Christ. Thus, whatever we give to anyone is the body and blood of Christ. Whatever we receive from others is similarly the body and blood of Christ. Every encounter we have with others, with creation, is an ongoing Eucharistic celebration. Every encounter is a sacred encounter. Our lives are transformed into the life of God. Our actions are transformed into the actions of God. What does this mean in a practical day-to-day reality? It means that we take the very finite things that make up our lives and offer them as bread and wine are offered at the Eucharist to God. Thus, in moments of conversation where we share the pain of our lives to someone who listens and receives that pain, in that moment, The giving of our story is the giving of the bread and wine at the Eucharist. The one who listens in that moment is receiving the body and blood of the Eucharist in the form of your story and offering the life-giving actions of God through his or her listening. What does it mean? It means in every action in our day-to-day lives, when we prepare food for another, when we receive food from another, we are at that moment celebrating the Eucharist. The pain and joy of my own life is sometimes too hard to contain. Thus, when I am asked to carry the burden of both the joy and pain of the world, the effects of COVID, the war in Afghanistan, the news that we see day to day, this is enough to break any of us. None of us in our individual selves are designed to carry this much pain, to absorb this much sadness. What can we do? We receive the stories as Eucharist. 
in the moment of the Eucharist, the bread is broken. And in the brokenness of the Eucharist, we remember the brokenness of the world, brokenness of COVID, brokenness of Afghanistan, brokenness of all the demonstrations we see around our globe today. John's Gospel invites us to transform our finite understandings into infinite manifestations of God's presence and God's actions. No one has done this better than Pierre Taylor de Chardin, a well-known theologian, but also a geophysicist and a respected scientist. Taylor was an Ignatian priest, and soon after World War I, he found himself devastated. He was alone in the desert, undergoing, doing some international research, and he was alone. And the source of his grief was his inability to celebrate the Eucharist on the feast day of the Transfiguration. He found himself in the Ordos Desert, and it was impossible for him to offer Mass. And in that moment, his understanding was transformed, and he offered as Eucharist the sunrise he could see in the distance and the labor of his scientific explorations. He offered as wine the love that he felt for all he cared about and all who cared about him. And so I end with some of the words of the hymn to matter from Taylor de Chardin. And he says this, Since once again, Lord, I have neither bread nor wine nor altar, I will raise myself beyond these symbols up to the pure majesty of the real itself. I, your priest, will make the whole earth my altar, and on it I will offer all the labors and sufferings of the whole world. Look, Lord, over there on the horizon, the sun has just touched with light the outermost fringes of the eastern sky. Once again, beneath this moving sheet of fire, the living earth wakes and trembles, and once again begins its fearful travail. I will place on my pattern, Lord, the harvest to be won by this renewal of labor, and into my chalice, I will pour all the sap which is to be passed out this day from the earth's fruits. May we do like Taylor and live the Eucharist moment by moment, day by day, in elevating our lives, in elevating our consciousness from the finite to the infinite.